everybody it's Jenny from Jenny Stitches and welcome back to my channel today thank you for joining me for another sewing bee inspired video um today's just going to be very quick and chatty um I appreciate I didn't manage to get a video up last week um I did film one for week eight however when I got home and looked at it it wasn't very good <laughs> so I thought instead of giving you something substandard it was best just to leave it for the week because um yeah i think i filmed it tired and it was a little bit of a mess so wipe the slate clean um so yes week nine we are on to now um it's semi-final time and japanese week and i think it's fair to say or at least i have found this year in particular that the themes and the subjects for each week are now becoming gradually more and more sort of niche if you will a very specialist so in terms of sort of pattern and fabric recommendations i find that increasingly difficult as the weeks go on at the start they tend to make fairly regular garments if you will so that's quite easy to kind of keep up with <laughs> but yeah we're definitely getting into the more unusual stages of the competition and um yeah japanese week was really really interesting um i'm really sort of fascinated by japanese culture i'd love to go to japan um mainly because <laughs> it's like strange but I, I did karate as a teenager and i got really sort of immersed in learning about the japanese culture and and all of that sort of discipline and the history around um the style of karate that i was practicing at the time and it, yeah, I, I wanted to go since then. Um, and now as an adult, obviously, there's a lot more elements to that. And ironically, um, as a family, we've started doing karate again recently. So, so yeah, um, I'm really interested in that. Uh, so that is an absolute digression. But this week is going to be chatty. <laughs> um, yeah, so the pattern challenge was a kimono-inspired wrap dress. Um now then kimonos if you have been a member of the sewing community for the last few years you may have seen there's been a, a lot of furor and a lot of that's perhaps not the right word but education shall we say going on around the kimono as a garment um and certain pattern companies and their I guess what we tend to label now as cultural appropriation of the kimono as a garment. Um, so there's been, if you've missed it, basically, um, the sewing community has been through a lot of changes where certain pattern companies have had to remove garments that they've previously described as a kimono as not to insult or offend or appropriate the culture, the Japanese culture, because the kimono as a garment is very important to the Japanese and some of those patterns were not kimonos so <laughs> so you'll see a lot of them now we've, I've renamed them to robes which and rightly so you know it's um it's the right thing to do and and I learned a lot through watching that process and I'm sure a lot of other people have too and and it's great that you know we're sort of becoming much more respectful of other cultures and traditions so i think the um sewing bee production team actually handled that really well obviously esme has a japanese friend and that's how they developed the actual pattern so in that respect it was very sensitive um so i won't be recommending any patterns from my books because there is absolutely nothing in my pattern collections that looks like a genuine kimono there are lots of things for example in the simplicity book that describes themselves as a kimono but they are not they are basically grown on sleeve jackets <laughs> so but yeah that that was fascinating and i really enjoyed watching that construction process in terms of those great big long pieces um laying them all out on the floor and bagging it out i had no idea that it was so complex um, so yeah, it was really, really interesting to watch. Whether that's something that any of us will sew at home, I would be interested to hear your thoughts. Would you like to sew um, an accurate kimono? Very, very beautiful though when they were made. Um, and it looked like most of the sewers were using cotton poplins. Um, or you could like use a nice quilting cotton for, um, for that sort of garment. It will give you that structure. You don't want anything too drapey and soft so yeah great and 
and I thought Annie just completely came from the back with that challenge didn't she it's um it's making us laugh at the moment because my mum goes to um a sewing class and if you're local you'll know all about the sewing classes that she goes to um and she is pat has got annie in the sweepstake basically to cut a long story short and at the start she said mm, i don't think i've got the winner and now each week that passes by when you're still in you're still in and now i'm thinking oh she might be in a chance with winning but if she wins the sweepstake she wins a voucher for my shop <laughs> so yeah <laughs> but still she wins the glory so you know it's all good um <laughs> Before I get too off track again. So yes, transformation. Um, again, the Sashiko embroidery, which I thought was lovely. Um, in the last few years, I've seen a lot of um, Sashiko around on um, sort of Instagram and the online sewing community. It's become a very popular way of doing sort of visible mending and it, it looks really, really cool. So it was nice to see that technique sort of featured and pushed out to a wider audience. Um, you can buy books on Sashiko and um, yeah I, it was one of the very few times where I've looked at the transformation and thought I could really enjoy doing that and it, it seemed like quite a realistic um, challenge which I guess is a bit more back to how it used to be in the very early days of the sewing bee when it was actually like an alteration and repairs kind of challenge so they weren't transforming something as such from one garment to another they were just repairing it and making it nicer um, in the process which which I think is actually a much more achievable sort of relatable thing for us all I think we could all do something like that mm. so yes enjoyed that very very much and I have lots of jeans that have rips in not deliberately but we'll not talk about that <laughs> okay and the made to measure challenge this week was um an origami inspired dress um so you can imagine that for me when i'm thinking about making these videos and possibly doing pattern recommendations i'm like okay that's gonna be hard <laughs> um and my first thoughts are if you're looking for something off that style i would definitely look at vogue i don't stock vogue but vogue tend to do much more unusual sort of fashion forward designs and i think you would find something a bit more in keeping there and as well, a lot of the sewers used elements which they had like added on embellishments, if you will. So sort of like the folded flowers on Deborah's dress um, and the circles on Brogan's sleeves. Um, so they're more like a post production kind of embellishment that they've come up with themselves. And I, and I guess now down at this end of the competition, they're looking for creativity and uniqueness which you're just not going to get with an off-the-shelf pattern. So um, I did pull a few patterns out, actually, which are kind of inspired by this challenge, but not necessarily 100% on the brief. Um, I'll start with Simplicity 9174. This is actually a knit dress, but I do think that the pleats in the front remind me of the fold-in. Um, so that's sort of inspired by but yeah very pretty dress there and with a nice neckline you've got that structure going on and actually the top of that dress with the long sleeve reminds me a little bit of the shape of Deborah's dress um also pulled out uh, 9470 and this is a top with sort of a folded pleats to one side a bit more subtle than say what they were looking for on the sewing bee but a bit more day-to-day for us and finally uh, Simplicity 9134 um, and I had a customer came into the shop this week wearing this dress and it looked beautiful on her as well um, but those pleats in the front um, yeah great very sort of origami inspired if you will and they, they pull the whole front of the dress in beautifully so they're just a few little pattern ideas that you might like um, but yeah it was very interesting to watch and the ending, oh my days, um, I cried <laughs> and I, I thought it was nice, I thought it was the right decision to make because each of them, obviously there were the two that clearly needed to stay and then it was, be it was between, between Brogan and Manny and I, if I was judging, which I'm not, um, I wouldn't have been able to pick 
between them either so I thought it was nice that neither of them lost out on a chance for the final um yeah and it, it was sort of like an emotional finish so it puts everything on a really nice footing for the final and I'm really looking forward to it um but I, I don't know as as a, a final note and I guess this isn't a very positive feeling to have I probably like many of you am a member of several sort of sewing Facebook groups and and some specifically related to the sewing bee and I find it so disappointing to see how people react to <laughs> to these to these results and to the contestants and the garments that they've made and and the people that they are and I think it's just nice to have that general reminder to just be kind about people because some of the things that I've seen written on the internet this week about what is essentially a sewing competition, it's hardly life or death, have been quite unpleasant. And um, yeah, I think, I, I think, you know, we just need to be nice to one another. And obviously the judges had their reasons for making that decision. And whether you disagree with them or not is not an excuse to attack somebody personally. Anyway, that's just my two cents on that. And yeah, sometimes the, the internet is brilliant and sometimes it can be a very disappointing place. <laughs> so, but I will not leave it on that note. Um, I really enjoyed Japanese week and I'm really looking forward to the final. I'm definitely going to open a special bottle of wine to watch the final next week. Um, and I really don't know who the winner is going to be. Tell me who you think is going to win because... I'm not sure at this stage. I love them all and I think the in the last couple of weeks the personalities have really come out and they've all shown different skills. And yeah, I'll I'll be missing having it on to watch every week. But I will love you and leave you and I will hopefully catch up with you soon. I've had so much new fabric in, in the last couple of weeks. Um I think one of my priorities next week will be to make a video to show you some of the new stock that has come in because some of them the photographs just do not do it justice um, and it's nice to get an up close look. So I hope you're well, I hope you're having a lovely weekend and I will see you soon. Take care.